anybody who has the knowledge, expertise, understands the problem and has a solution or find a solution or have a partnership to find a solution, a holistic solution should really look at this industry because this is going to be the next big thing. Hello and welcome to the Startup Operator Podcast. I'm Roshan Karyapa. The EV or electric vehicle space is heating up with entrepreneurs rushing in to build everything from bikes to batteries and a whole spectrum of products and solutions across the ecosystem. But it's not without the challenges of any nascent and developing market. My guest today is Pankaj Dubey, who is an automobile industry veteran and also the co-founder of Power Global, that is building swappable lithium-ion batteries that can transform any auto into a high-performance electric vehicle. I spoke to Pankaj about what it takes to build in the space from the product and technology side of things uh, to actually building a swappable battery network to some of the regulatory tailwinds that the sector is seeing and also their plans for expansion in the future. This was a fantastic conversation and is a useful primer for anyone looking to understand the EV space. So let's dive into this episode of the Startup Operator Podcast with Pankaj Dubey. Hi, sir. Welcome to the Startup Operator Podcast. Thank you so much for making the time. Thanks, Roshan. Uh, great to be here on the Startup Operator uh, Podcast. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, interest in the EV space and, uh, you know, we've been meaning to talk to someone uh, and I can't think of a more perfect person uh, for, for, you know, to have this conversation. So uh, again, really excited for, you know, everything that we're going to talk about today. Maybe to begin things, I'd love to take a step back and look at your career, right? You've spent three decades in the auto industry. And uh, in that time, you know, there was, there's been such an evolution, right? I think we've gone from two stroke to four stroke to now, you know, EV and so on, right? Zero emission and so on. When you look back at the three decades, you know, uh, how do you see that evolution? Yeah, it's been a very interesting journey when the shift happened from two stroke to four stroke, when the shift happened from scooters to motorcycle was India was predominantly a scooter market and uh, geared scooter market and how it shifted to uh, uh, gearless uh, scooters and uh, and how motorcycle which was seen as like a not a very positive way everybody would say that only the rash people buy motorcycles and then the parents would always like to avoid giving motorcycle to children to say you know if you have motorcycle you will have accidents and you will break your leg so therefore i would better give you a scooter which has a front card and how suddenly a new technology comes in and even the parents started giving away motorcycle instead of a scooter and the primary reason being that uh, motorcycles were definitely more exciting for the youth but at the same time it was much more fuel efficient than the scooter a scooter giving a mileage of 35 40 and a motorcycle giving on an average 55 60 it's almost like a 50 percent saving on the fuel and the shift happens and suddenly the indian market which is predominantly a geared scooter market got converted to a motorcycle market and india became the largest uh, motorcycle manufacturer of the world so these are some of the uh, highlights that i have seen uh, how now we saw ambassador and then the maruti and the new age of uh, cars that have come in people buying very basic vehicle like starting with 800 cc and now straight away going to 2000 plus cc cars so all this shift because of the economy growth because of the per capita income increase of the people and also the changes that the industry have made the, with the advent of new technology and i similarly you know seeing all of this I feel that the next big change is what we are going to discuss now. Right, right. Yeah, that's a great summary. And, uh, you know, we briefly touched upon EV, right? So what do you see as the impact of EV on the auto industry? The impact of EV as of now has been very small. But what I see is that this market would predominantly become a EV market in the next five years at max. And I see that there will be a big shift will that will happen. The way that we see the evolution happen from a scooter to a motorcycle, like that kind of a drastic change is going to happen in the next five years. So that is what I anticipate. And and, and there are many factors which will lead to that. Right. Yeah. We. Uh, I mean, we we keep hearing right by 2030 that uh, you know most of the vehicles on road will be EV and so on. It seems very ambitious, but that's how these things happen, right? I mean, gradually and then suddenly. 
so it's a very nascent ecosystem right there's a lot to develop and uh, the cost of innovation of course is is uh, is not cheap right i mean it's definitely hard to execute i mean everything has to be built in a sort of a full stack uh, fashion from bikes to batteries to uh, everything and standards have to still develop so you can easily plug and play to uh, infrastructure and so on so you know what will it take to develop the ev ecosystem in india we have to understand you know what does the customer expect now government is very clear they want to push this industry is also following industry is making new products around it but it is the customer who have to be one and who have to be sold on this new technology and uh, for a customer to buy ev it is clearly they have a comparison with the current vehicle that they are driving so if you say that uh, you know your current vehicle takes you from one place to another and there are all sorts of uh, infrastructure of refueling re-energizing your vehicle available as opposed to that you buy a new vehicle which is a, an electric vehicle and then you know you don't know whether you will get the charging done on the road or not so so these uh, apprehensions are there uh, in the customer's mind as of today and uh, in order to plug that up a lot of uh, efforts have to be taken place between you know more vehicles to be put on the road and uh, also developing the infrastructure which is viable because it's all interdependent if you have a infrastructure and you don't have enough vehicles the infra infrastructure will collapse and if you have enough vehicles on the road uh, then the infrastructure has to catch pace with that so that the customers don't face any challenge. So what I see is that this is where, you know, a company like Power Global comes in and understands all the challenges which are there in the marketplace and bring in technology which is needed. And what India needs is basically good quality products. Unfortunately, EV market has been uh, existing in India for last couple of decades, but most of the technology ha that has been used as of now was primarily importing from a country where you, where you get a cheap quality uh, product and then you try to brand yourself and then market it. Unfortunately, automobiles have always rejected low quality products. So cheap products is not something automobile accepts. And uh, this is where, uh, you know, you, you won't find any big Chinese uh, motorcycle manufacturers coming or the two wheelers or or for that matter exceptions maybe one or two exceptions but most of them could not succeed in india because the uh, the expectation of the customer uh, is different from what the understanding they had and what the technology that has been flowing into the country as of now is like a something which is a very low tech because people don't understand indian customers are not cheap uh, purchase uh, price customers like they don't buy a product which is the cheapest available they buy a product which has the value for money the lowest cost but has value for money like if even if i spend a 10 rupee product i should have a value of that like if i buy a toothbrush so i know that after i use the toothbrush i'll use it for uh, graying my hair uh, uh, coloring my hair and then multiple uses of that so the end use is like it's been defined uh, in a way that the customer checks what is it the duration that will buy like if you have a toothbrush and if there is a hole in it people might buy that more than a toothbrush which doesn't have a hole why because i wear a, a indian pajama and it needs a nada and for that i need uh, to use that so so such things comes into the play which is what uh, it's not that the cheapest or if you come and sell me a five rupee or a three rupees toothbrush as opposed to that there are eight rupee toothbrush which i rely upon i would better buy so i'll see the value i will not see the lowest cost and uh, so the cheap use and throw is nothing uh, india is indian customers do not accept that so they accept good quality product but a low cost like if you say the motorcycles all the motorcycles in india are like eight hundred dollars seven hundred dollars you can have a bike in india even lower than that uh, now six hundred dollars also you can get a bike but you go outside the uh, country and you go to us and i mean nothing is available in this price when motorcycle you can get a cycle in that price point so uh, this is uh, the customer's demand but the volume here is huge 
the scale is huge and therefore it is viable so these are some of the things that the ev has evolved but unfortunately it got into a wrong or a low tech technologies and not many people invested to develop a technology here which is international global high quality low cost high quality not the cheap cheapest product available so this is the big uh, challenge which the ev industry have been facing a low tech products in the country and as a result the industry which should have really grown by now has been struggling to say the least because even today out of 100 vehicles that are sold only one vehicle is electric 99 vehicles are still being sold which are fossil fuel driven and and that is what is going to happen the change is going to happen in the next 5 years and that is only because you will have new technologies and you would be addressing the challenges that the customer has to face customer if today customer wants to buy an ev vehicle and he, he goes to buy a petrol vehicle and a ev uh, ev vehicle then ev is more expensive than the petrol vehicle then ev has a problem of a range range problem is everywhere but the infrastructure is missing here because range is also in a any two wheeler or four wheeler with the petrol diesel also has a range after which you need a gas station but there are gas stations which can support but in the ev it is not there now why will i pay more for a product where i don't have a uh, recharging facility easily available also there is another very critical element here that the charging infrastructure has to be very quick but even the quickest is compared to what when you go to a petrol station how much time do you spend at the petrol station maximum 5 minutes so now if i give you a solution that okay for 2 hours you wait and you will get the vehicle charged i don't have time i can't wait my vehicle to get charged for 2 hours so these are some of the big challenges which is holding the ev market and and but there are very big innovations happening big changes are going to come which will make this a reality right uh yeah i think indian consumers are very value conscious right i would say not price conscious necessarily and uh, yeah. there is a so as you were speaking i i got reminded of the nano story right i mean wonderful car but you know very poor marketing in terms of uh, you know being sold as the cheapest car possible right and uh, we know what happened afterwards and uh, I, yeah sorry I would, please uh, that's very interesting example that you gave I, i'm sorry i i have to butt in here yeah, because yeah. i was at that time heading a, a two wheeler company and people will come and say would you be able to sell two wheelers because uh, now nano is going to come at 1 lakh rupees and you are trying to sell a motorcycle at 1 lakh rupees who will buy a motorcycle at 1 lakh rupees <laughs> and my answer was very simple you know I, if i buy a 1 lakh rupees car and if i go what will be my image and if i buy a 1 lakh rupees motorcycle and go what will be my image indian customers who are image conscious will never sit inside that car nobody should see me coming out of a nano because they will say oh you got a nano <laughs> so that imagery is so important to a class of customer right then right. come to the the customer who is buying a cheapest of the motorcycle like a 35000 40000 rupees motorcycle now he he would go to a nano to look at it but then he would see that he doesn't have enough revenue to Uh, have that one lakh rupees vehicle, and then the running cost, maintenance cost in a motorcycle is hardly anything. And when you go for a car, then he would be worried about that. So the cheapest uh, customer would also not buy Nano. So I am not sure who is going to buy Nano because, and then the marketing was like the cheapest car available in the world. So who wants to be seen the cheapest car available? What will be happen to my image? and indian people are very image conscious at least in the north part of india people yeah. would not like to be seen in a cheap uh, cheap products right. you, they use it at home when nobody sees that but they they would say that they would never do it in public so so that was the challenge so, i mean I, back to you i mean this is what <laughs> <laughs> right no that's uh, definitely interesting i think we have uh, we have set enough of a background right now to talk about power global and i'd love to know more about the founding story and you know your process of going from idea to product to company oh, i mean it's an amazing story uh, very interestingly porter and i uh, got connected uh, on a social media and we interacted with each other uh, on a non business situations like what are you doing what i am doing what 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 do you like about india so we started with that 
and then we discussed about the uh, interest level of both of us and uh, i was really amazed at the you know the interest of porter in the indian scriptures and knowledge and the indian people so we started interacting on you know spiritual levels talking about bhagavad gita and what is the life uh, what is the philosophy of life of yours and mine i i i had that point of time i had just left uh, polaris and i was uh, uh, i just started my own company uh, and i made a stated objective to uh, contribute to the sustainability goals uh, of uh, ending poverty from the country so i said i am starting my company where i want that there should be no poverty and let me work towards that that is what my goal is and then he was explaining about his philosophy that he started a public benefit corporation in us and he said yeah, yeah that is what i want to do now we have done enough for ourselves now i want to do something for the public where public get benefited so i am starting a public benefit corporation and uh, and uh, and when he understood that my goal is to end poverty he said what why don't we join hands and start to first with a no uh, uh, elimination of uh, poverty on the energy front like no uh, energy poverty let's start with that and i said yeah that's a good idea because energy is something which is the core of all uh, technologies and if energy is changed you know and energy is uh, poverty is over then a lot of things would happen like education in the rural area does not happen because the electricity doesn't happen during the night so they can only study during the day or they use the, the lantern and all which is very little of the light and so if, if the energy poverty is removed there will be a lot of progress anyways happening and so that's how we broadly got engaged with each other with the philosophy of our lives you know on a spiritual level and then i recommended him to read books like autobiography of a yogi and and then he started discussing about his uh, his past and what he wants to do uh, to benefit the public and that's when he came out with uh, i mean he's a very sound engineer one of the best that i've ever seen and he came out with like i want to do uh, in order to eliminate the energy poverty i'm thinking of making these batteries and we, we he planned to implement in number of areas telecom uh, auto and uh, stationary applications and others and then uh, i said that okay yeah let's uh, let's look at it that we start with auto and then move on to others because that is something which i think is going to happen and uh, so we discussed uh, uh, i mean first we were aligned on a spiritual and a common goals perspective and that is when we thought that now uh, let's look at something what business we can do together having respect for each other's philosophies and the vision and the ethics and all of that and we thought that now let's look at something together and so he gave this idea of uh, batteries and uh, swappable batteries and and then we discussed about and also about uh, you know retrofitting the vehicles changing existing vehicles to electric and we discussed all of that and then we came out with the, that this is doable and we can actually join hands and look at this opportunity to be implemented and be made successful in a country like india and then we go out to all emerging economies and and we go and make it successful in these countries as well and that is where you know we brainstormed we had some experts coming in and um, we did a lot of calls together and and we came out with a very robust plan which is what we are going to implement now uh, and and the plan was that first was to understand why it's not happening what is a stopping so what i just explained to you about things like uh, infrastructure pricing price of electric vehicle being more expensive than the uh, equivalent fossil fuel vehicle and, and the biggest of the challenge in this is the battery itself like battery is costing 40 to 50% of the vehicle cost and that is what is making the ev more expensive than the uh, equivalent fossil fuel vehicle and the battery technology as of now whatever batteries even till date is available uh, it is not a very high quality like it has the issues of uh, life of the batteries the issues are there in terms of how many cycles you can use it for in the electric vehicle 
So we understood all these challenges and then we discussed and came out with a solution to address 360 degree, uh, like everything, how to bring the cost down of the vehicle, EV vehicle to become at par with, uh, you know, fossil fuel vehicle or even cheaper than that. Then uh, how can we make the infrastructure? How can we make the customer believe in it? And what is the benefit for it, the customer? And why should he do that? So we came out with all of that and also about that if you built up an infrastructure, the number of vehicles will be a challenge that how can you keep pace with the infrastructure you develop? How can you feed that so that it becomes viable? So you have to put more vehicles on the road. And with the current pace of 1% of the universe being electric vehicle, we thought that it will take very long time before you can actually make these infrastructure viable uh, because uh, even at a CAGR of 30% or 40% or even 50%, 1% will become 1.5, then 2.25, then 3.5. And it will still be like a long time before it can reach to even 10% or 15%. <coughs> so we thought that why not convert existing vehicles and create a population which is viable for the infrastructure. So, And we only develop the infrastructure. The challenge that how much time a person will spend at the energy charging station. So we discussed that and we said, let's look at a solution which is even faster than, uh, you know, getting your petrol and diesel filled up. So we came out, uh, Porter gave that suggestion of swappable batteries, that you have a charged battery and you go and you, you have a discharged battery and you go to a EOSC where charge batteries are there and you put your existing discharge battery, take out a fresh battery, and then you go out on the road again in less than a minute. So almost uh, one fifth of the time that you spend at a petrol station, you know, even faster than that, and you are back on the road again. So these are the concepts that we discussed and to set up the infrastructure. And that is where my role, my understanding, my three decades of work in the country uh, is coming handy where I can set up the distribution network, the infrastructure, having built the relationship, having built the uh, market and knowing so many businessmen across the country, especially in the automobile field, uh, really helps me to get those partners who can really make this happen or what we are looking to change in the country. So this is where you know we all discussed and we came out with a plan. Okay, let's do something for others. Let's work on uh, our common goals, always remember that we are going to have a public benefit corporation. We are a public benefit corporation. And so our intent is to earn uh, profits, but deploy it back into the society to make uh, the society a better place, to make in the life of difference in the life of the people whom we touch, whether it is a customer or the vendors or the partners or our own employees. We felt that you know this is a place which we should create where there are equalities we get gender equality in the in the in and the entire premises i mean in the entire company we go into even in the marketplace we develop solutions which is not just for one one set of population but for others like we can make vehicles which are very easy to drive and even female uh, drivers can use and uh, the uh, energy very easily and make it very simple and efficient. And then the very good solution that we came out, which will make the EVs even cheaper than the equivalent fossil fuel vehicle was to use the concept of energy as a service. So like we buy the gas, like we buy, you know, prepaid cards. So you don't pay uh, upfront, but we pay per use and energy as a service when you buy a uh, gas. Every time that you are out of the gas, either you go to the station to pick it up or you give a phone call and the uh, gas station is del uh, the gas is delivered to your place. Similarly, uh, and then you don't buy that. You just put a small security and, and you exchange the cylinder. So this cylinder is not mine. The service is mine. So that, that's the principle we use to say that we will sell energy as a service. So we are not selling the battery. We are selling the service. So you get a battery which is efficient and you don't have to worry about spending 50% upfront cost and then spending every three years or two years or less, even less than that and spend again 50% to get that battery again. 
So we decided that we will give them a battery, which is like a, a lifetime warranty. You buy the service from us and it is for the lifetime. Like you buy a gas, maybe 20 years back or 30 years back, your parents bought it or you bought it 15 years back. You don't buy that again. You just give a call. I, I want to re refill this. So same thing we use and you get a service, which is for a lifetime. So there is a warranty is like unlimited warranty. As long as you use the service, you use it. We don't want to use it. You give it back to us. So that's the concept we created, which is very unique, swappable batteries. And the technology that Porter has the experience of working with one of the world's best products, whether it was a SpaceX or Faraday Future or Romeo Power System, or all the experience that he gathered, he built uh, this battery using her, his expertise uh, and give a very high quality, you know, something which is like India does not have today, more efficient, like almost uh, giving double output of what in the similar batteries we are getting today. Right. Fantastic. It's a very interesting journey and uh, certainly very unique as well. I mean, you guys connected on a, a whole other level. So, you know, for a lay person who's listening to this or perhaps watching it, what does it take to build a battery? You know, I mean, we've uh, heard about lithium ion technology for a while, right? And uh, as you said, I think all of us are familiar to some degree, but you know, if you could talk to us about some of the nuances of building something like this. Yeah, so making a lithium ion battery is very unique and very different from, you know, making a lead acid battery or for that matter, any other battery. So that's a very common a mistake people do is that that I am making you know this battery so I can also make lithium ion battery. Lithium ion battery is very very different from a normal battery because lithium ion battery is very evolved where you have to use the new technologies that are being used in lithium ion batteries are virtually making it like a, a combination of the energy source plus the IT, telecom, everything, IOTs and the battery management system in, uh, built into that. So it re literally monitors the performance of each and every battery remotely. And, and that's how uh, this technology is very advanced. And, and to understand this technology, it requires a, a very high level of uh, skill development and knowledge. So this is a very highly technical uh, field it's not something that is so easily that okay we get something from china and we get something from here we assemble it pack it and sell no it's not because uh, and it is like you have to have an engineered solution where you combine all of this and you understand that uh, what each aspect of these uh, iot's or bms whatever we're developing or the chipsets that are putting it how would be utilizing that for making my product more efficient so this is something which is a very evolved and very high technology product. And it's something where persons should really spend a lot of time learning about it before going into this manufacturing. Uh, I see a lot of youngsters who jumped into it. Okay, this is a great and let me do ourselves. And, and they are still uh, on the job, but, but then they're facing a lot more challenges if, if they would have come prepared and learned and used uh, the latest technology into the product, it would have been more useful. So, so lithium ion battery should not be seen as another battery. It is like a totally new energy uh, source and it's a totally new technology and it should be treated respectfully like that and should not be just copy paste of any, any existing technologies. Oh, it's a great point that you make actually. I think a lot of entrepreneurs have the software hangover, right? Which is the, you know, fail fast or ship something uh, like an MVP and then, you know, iterate and learn kind of a thing. But uh, there are some some products, I mean, like the battery in this case, right? Where uh, you need to have a, a certain degree of quality uh, even before you get it to the market, right? And requires research and patience and innovation at uh, a very core level. You, you gave an idea about what the product is about, but could you summarize the product catalog at this point of time? Uh, I see that you have something called a Rave Retrofit, which is uh, swappable for any three-wheeler, or uh, typically like an auto rickshaw or something of that sort. So who are your customers right now? And uh, yeah, uh, just to uh, maybe like describe the product as well a little bit. Yeah, so we have made a swappable battery, very high density, and we have I've already given you some brief about that. 
So the battery is like a 2.5 kilowatt hour battery and the weight of the battery would be about uh, what 13 kgs plus about 13 plus something and and what we are doing is that we are going to have the usage to be increased we are doing the retrofitment and the retrofitment is targeted at the existing three-wheeler drivers or owners so we're starting with three wheelers and then we plan to convert other uh, set of vehicles but we are starting with three wheelers where the retrofit kit would comprise of uh, you know whatever a new electric vehicle needs like a motor controller wiring harness addition to that some display units and also that the user can find that out and so so those are the things that we have created to facilitate an existing customer to get converted to electric i know in india a lot of people they spend a fortune of their uh, earnings into a product and therefore if they have to be told that okay remove this product and buy something new and that is where they take a lot of time to decide but if you say okay i would convert your existing vehicle into a new vehicle and it is going to be beneficial to you and if there is a word of mouth or uh, you know somebody says yeah i changed it and i gained out of it so so then it becomes easier so the from a product portfolio point of view we have a kit which we have developed for the existing uh, uh, existing uh, petrol diesel cng vehicles to be converted into electric and we are also in uh, bringing out a you know adapter kit and others to convert the existing e-rickshaws which are largely running on a lead acid battery to be changed to a lithium ion solution and um, i think a key part of the business will be to build this distribution network right i mean for the, the battery swapping network itself and of yeah. course i mean you have three decades of experience uh, building these networks and so on but uh, again from a layperson's perspective you know what how do you go about doing this you know is it that can i will i be able to exchange uh, this uh, swap this battery at any maybe kirana store or something like that or is it will it require like some specific uh, like a specific shop or a specific outlet as such as such you know the solution of the swapping solution can be put in a kirana shop it can be put in any i mean it's like a small atm machine and if you have a bigger space uh, then you can have maybe four or five of the atm machines if the volume is high then you can put that together in terms of area this is what is required so it's not a very big space required there's i mean it's it's like a self operating so you don't have to have expert uh, helping out it's like a, you go to a atm machine you put your card you take the money out and go like that it is like you put your existing battery in you take out the fresh battery and then you're you're on the road again and for that you it can be at multiple places it can be at a kirana shop it can be at any of the showrooms it can be in malls it can be in public places it can be anywhere so so depending upon that how many people in which area are using this solution we would develop and build up this uh, entire distribution and charging network so we plan to start with few cities and then expand to the national level in about a year, year and a half time. Right. So what do you have uh, coming up uh, in the future? You know, I mean, um, are you also adding new products to the existing, uh, you know, catalog of products that you have? And uh, you mentioned that, you know, you will be expanding out of India, right? Basically, I mean, you're going to test if this, uh, you know, how this works in India and then probably take it to other parts of Asia and maybe Africa. So, yeah, if you could talk about the next, you know, 18 to 24 months. Yeah, so what we plan is the next one year or so we will be largely spent in the country and we would be expanding uh, and focusing on expansion in the country. There are already a lot of interest coming in from neighboring countries like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, uh, Thailand, Indonesia, also some of, some of the African countries like Nigeria and all people have inquired from us and um, are very keen to partner with us. So we will look at that after a year, so maybe towards the later part of next year like 2022 end and early 2023 is when we will start looking at those locations for now uh, the next uh, 12 months uh, would be largely focused on the india market to be uh, built up uh, in all, all the major cities and, and then expand to other smaller markets as well because 
we would be present in almost all the ma major markets like wherever there is a good population of three wheelers we would be setting up our distribution network as well as the swapping network so it's a pretty massive uh, task to just address to these but we are parallelly looking at that we go to the uh, other eco uh, economies and make the impact in other areas as well like the countries that i mentioned to you so all of this is in a like we would be 24 to 36 months of time whatever countries that we have mentioned uh, most of them would be having our solution as well with our partners right and this year we're also seeing some regulatory tailwinds as well right i mean uh, uh, with ev especially so government has announced the fame 2 subsidies right now uh, and uh, there's of course the manufacturing pli and atmanirbhar bharat and uh, you know the ministers have uh, uh, you know come out openly and said that you know they have this very ambitious aim of ev certain percentage of the market uh, by 2030 and so on so how are those actually uh, impacting your business yeah it's very welcome because you know uh, a change like this only happen when there are policy makers who are uh, inclined to do this so it's very clear that the current government is making very efficient uh, policies based on the needs of the customers and recommendation of the industry bodies. So they are looking at it to make this because ultimately it would make India uh, much more pro prosperous because of the import and export imbalance that India has is largely because of the import of the fuel. And if, if we can be at Nirbhar on the energy source, then you know the face of the economy would change completely and this is what the policy makers the ministers are all talking about and they are gunning for it and so whatever policies that they're making facilitating even giving subsidies and all are in that direction only so having understood that uh, this is the new technology and this is going to be successful and this is what india needs not just from a economy perspective but also from the emission and the pollution perspective india has almost uh, in the top 20 polluted cities india has 14 cities listed there so uh, we have to do something about these pollution levels of uh, co2 emission and nox and all that at the same time we don't talk much about it but the noise pollution is also very very difficult imagine if i was on the road trying to do this podcast you won't i mean you will get so much of noise so all of that will get respite when you have uh, the electric vehicle going on the road right so in terms of policy making I, I i really congratulate the current government to take all these steps the leadership is fantastic right now and they are willing to i mean they have their own uh, limitations as well because they are, they are not a very um, they don't have a very rich uh, bank balance which they can just say okay open up like we will spend everything but given the resources that they have the kind of policies that they've made is amazing and this is something which will be uh, attracting uh, every youth entrepreneurs even companies from outside india looking at india because of these reasons right yeah and a lot of entrepreneurs are now looking at the ev space i mean it's uh, it's very interesting super hot right now uh, so what would your advice be to folks out there who want to build a, a company in this space? Yeah, I mean, it's, see, always uh, entrepreneurs who have a vision to see what's going to happen after five years and 10 years, and they get into the right space, they really do very well, mostly. But you have to be treading very carefully to use of technology the product and services that you're going to offer has to be understanding the customer in mind like value for money for the customer and you have to have product and services to facilitate but the reason why you should be there in the ev is because i can guarantee that this is the next big thing whatever the government is saying it's going to happen probably even before that so we have a doubt because we can't see it on the road today. And that is where a vision comes in. That is where visionary comes in. That you see that it's going to happen. Very few people can see that, but it happens. Like say somebody who invested into uh, Airtel, 
when everybody say who would buy mobile phones you know it's like a landline is what is going on who's going to buy oh this mobile phone is so expensive how common man will not use and today everybody has two and three phones you know because the shift of the technology and because airtel is airtel because they invested at the right time into the field they were one of the first ones to get into this and they become so big so ev is something which is going to become very big but doesn't mean that everybody who whosoever whatever you do in ev will become successful you have to be smart enough to understand in what area based on your specialization and expertise that you have like in our case we had porter who have a great expertise in the battery and energy management and then i partnered with him with a experience of a distribution marketing and leading companies in the subcontinent and that that together it's a complete story where we can handle any part of the business between just two of us like that the entrepreneurs should look at what is the strength they have what is inside them i don't for me to set up a distribution is a cake walk for somebody if i try to do what potter is doing i would be a failure completely i would never succeed because that is not my strength so based on my strength if i do my job which i have been doing and i know that i can do it is something where the entrepreneur should focus upon what is your strength and whenever you are partnering with anything anybody any company what is the strength they bring in and together can you solve the problem the challenge is that you know like an elephant you have like holding one part of the tail and holding one part of the trunk and and then you imagine and you say like we will do this part let somebody else do that so you have to look at the holistic solution ev will work only when there is a holistic solution ev will not work if i just set up the infrastructure and wait for the vehicles to increase and or i make the ev and say oh government is not giving me incentive that is why sale is not happening so you have to be there and you have to think on the opportunity to be at the right place and do something which is going to impact and probably if you don't have a 360 degree solution associate with somebody who has that and do the related field okay the so power global has thought of a 360 degree solution but power global is not going to do everything we will still need the motor controllers wiring harness we will need to have so many components being developed to make this dream of ours a reality like we have planned uh, like in the next 5 years to convert around 800000 uh, vehicles retrofitted only and and now if if you have if you believe in our dream and you say okay i will give you this part in india and and you know you have a assured 8 lakh parts business now just so this is one of the ways the other is that you are an expert in a technology you you are an experts on a it you are an experts on a iot so you're focusing on that and specialize and you can provide services to the industry the ev industry so it's all that you should look at something which is within you and can you find something that you enjoy and you have the specialization get into that field only don't try to just say that okay everybody is talking about ev i will also do ev what i don't know so that is where the challenge is that is where the problem happens that you are saying that i want to get into ev everybody is saying it's going to be the next big thing i will go there but you don't have anything inside you for the ev then there is a challenge so entrepreneurs i would say that please see your strength and and i believe that everybody has huge strengths so it's not that you have not done anything in ev so you won't be able to do anything in ev like for me in the last decade i was just put a foot one foot into the ev market like i was selling one of the vehicle as atv and it was again like out of 100% sales that we were doing only 1% was ev but i knew what ev is and what challenges it is facing and what you have to do and now i am into full fledged into ev so similarly i mean if anybody who has the knowledge expertise understands the problem and has a solution or find a solution or have a partnership to find a solution a holistic solution should really look at this industry because this is going to be the next big thing awesome 
Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a great point, actually. I mean, picking the right problem to solve really is, is such a critical thing, right? So this has been a fascinating conversation, sir. Thank you again for being on the podcast. Really wonderful hosting you and all the best for everything that you have coming up in the future. Thanks a lot, Roshan. It was great to be part of this conversation. Thank you so much for listening. If you liked this episode, then don't forget to subscribe to us on your favorite platform and share this episode with all of your fellow startup operators. Also, follow the startup operator on LinkedIn and Twitter for more updates. Stay safe, take care and see you soon on a brand new episode of the startup operator.